What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Heskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so moving right along, I had planned to do a video on exporting raw audio regions or audio events, audio clips, however you want to call them. But there was actually quite a lot of questions and comments from last week's video. So what I thought I would do is actually do one more video, kind of like a Q&A of last week's video to hopefully drive home all the points I was trying to make last week. Now, full disclosure, I'm not going to be repeating anything I spoke about last week. I will make sure that I include a link in the description of this YouTube video and the blog post that'll bring you to last week's video so that you can check that out. But the main questions that were coming up were things like, well, what happens if I have tracks that are also linked to channels or what happens if I have mixed bus processing and how do I deal with if my channels are routed to different buses and my effects returns and all sorts of things like that. So first of all, I actually want to open up Google Chrome here for a moment. And I want to refer to an article that I wrote a couple of years back, which is called Build Your Deliverables Into Your Mix and the Benefits of Pre-Planning. Uh, I'll actually include a link to this uh, article as well. So this is worth having a read if you're into delivering stems or this is something you have to deal with on a regular basis. But to summarize this really quickly, you'll note that we have these different colors on our audio events, we can think of each one of these colors as a different element that needs to be stemmed out. Now, each set of these tracks is then routed to a bus channel where I've custom named the bus channel according to what it needs to be. So here we have percussion, bass, melodic, and harmonic. These are the subgroups that I was required to deliver for this particular job as determined by the composer and as determined by the client to the composer. So if we take a look at the routing here, you'll note that all of my percussion tracks are routed to the percussion bus, which is over here. All of my bass tracks, in this case, it's just one. Even though it's one, it's still routed to a bass bus. Anything that's melodic and purple is routed to a melodic bus, and anything that's harmonic is routed to a harmonic bus. In addition to that, each set of tracks, or each group of tracks that I'm working with, they all have their own discrete effects return. Now, regardless if I'm using the exact same reverb for all four of these effects returns, they have their own effects return, and this is quite simply so that the effects return is also routed to the bus. Now, the idea here is that if I build this routing into my production, into my song, then when it comes time to export everything, it is so simple for me to do that. So for example, this is the same export stems dialog window that we have. You'll note that I'm exporting a percussion bus, a bass bus, a melodic bus, a harmonic bus, and also a mix bus because I needed to print the stereo uh, mix down in addition to the stems. But if we take into account our routing and we know that all of the source tracks are being routed to their respective subgroup, which is on a bus channel, and all of the effects returns for these source tracks are being routed to the respected subgroup. So effects one go into percussion, effects two to bass, effects three to melodic, and effects four to harmonic. Then it's very easy for me to print my stems as long as I've designed my song or my production to have the proper routing. Now this probably has a lot to do with the fact that I came from Pro Tools and in Pro Tools, I would always build my routing into my actual Pro Tools session. And any of my recording that I was doing for my stems, I was actually doing those in real time, essentially routing my bus channel to a new audio track and printing that audio. But if we take a look at the same concept in a really simplified structure, and like I said, I'm not going to be repeating anything from last week, but one thing I will say is that 100% of the time when I'm exporting stems, I use channels versus tracks. And I understand that there's benefits of using tracks versus channels, and we spoke about those last week, but the main thing to point out here is that I will always build my routing and build what I need to be my deliverables into my production, the same way that we looked at in the previous example. So in this case, if I wanted to do that, and I wanted to do that using channels, we would have to do some sort of routing. So if we take a look at all these three sounds over here, we have our main drums, our parallel compression drums, and our reverb return. These are currently all routed to the main outs. So in order for me to get these to a point where I could print them as a subgroup or as a channel, I would need to essentially right click and I would need to add a bus for selected channels. Now let's quickly go ahead and rename this drums. 
And in fact, you know what I'm also going to do is I'll just drag over this insert here so that we don't have any clipping that's happening. So now what's happening here is that my main drums, in terms of my drum loop, my parallel compression channel, and my reverb, they're all routed to one bus channel, which is my drums subgroup, if you will. So now, if we think about this in terms of how we would structure this, essentially, I could think about this as if though I wanted to create an audio track and set the input of this audio track to this subgroup. And then if I was to come back to the beginning, let's go ahead and record enable this channel and print this, I would be printing the output of this bus channel. So now if I play this back, it will sound exactly the same as my bus channel. And essentially, this is very much what exporting stems is doing. So if we do the same thing, Option or Alt, single click, we'll deselect all of them, and we'll select drums, we'll get a read of this prefix over here, and we'll bring this back into the song. You'll note that it's doing the same thing, but it's rendering it offline. So a couple things to consider here. Any automation, any effects processing, any panning, anything like that that's on these individual channels that are routed to this bus will be rendered into this file. So if I automated this bus channel to dip in volume and then come up, we would have that resulting in this file. Okay, so with all that being said, like I said, 100% of the time I build my deliverables into my Studio One song. I do this from the beginning. And the other thing to take into consideration is that I always use channels. And the reason is because I'm building my deliverables into my routing. So I'm thinking ahead in terms of how I need to print things. Now, I want to take a look at another example here. So this is a real in-use example of what exactly what I'm talking about. In this particular case, I have all of these folders which are linked to a bus channel. And within these folders, I have my actual source tracks. And in some cases, that might just be one audio file. And in other cases, such as my percussion high stem, that's actually numerous files. Now, if I open up my console, and let's go ahead and expand this view, you'll note that I also have a reverb send that's coming on these individual channels. But this is actually going out to a reverb that is then routed to a subgroup. So instead of routing to my main outs, let's go ahead and hide this and let's minimize our console and let's collapse all of our tracks. You notice that my drums folder, which is linked to a bus, is routed to, surprise, drums. If, for example, I take a look at my bass or my harmonic one, harmonic two, melodic one, melodic two, they're all routed to a new bus channel, which is a subgroup. Now, if I expand my console, You'll also note that any processing, which would be normally thought of as mix bus processing, is actually occurring on my subgroup bus channels versus happening on my main outs. Now, this is not really needed, but as one final level of, I guess, flexibility in terms of how I print my mix, you'll then note that I have another set of bus channels where they're named drums stem, perk low stem, perk high stem, bass stem, and you'll note that the outputs of all of these bus channels, for example, the strings stem, is then routed to this bus channel over here. And the main reason here is I have a VCA that is controlling the level of all of these channels. So after any mix bus processing that's happening on these subgroups, and even if I had automation, because I have a VCA, I could essentially increase or decrease the volume as needed. And like I said, it doesn't matter if I had these automated because the VCA would simply allow me to offset that. Now, another thing to take into consideration is that the name of the channel will be the resulting name of the audio file. So I want my final stems to have the proper name. So this is drums, stem, perk low stem, perk high stem. So. This is quite an advanced mix template for this particular job, and it can be really confusing if we were to look at everything. But like I said, if we simplify it down to its core elements, we can have a look at the basic routing of what's happening. All of our bus channels and anything to do with the effects return are routed to a new subgroup, which is on a bus channel. My mix bus processing is done there. And then just basically to give me the proper name, I've actually created one more set of subgroups over here, 
also so that I can adjust the master volume with my master VCA, which is controlling the level of all of these tracks over here. Now, even though this is a quite a complicated session or quite a complicated song, quite a complicated mix template, when it comes time to actually have to deliver my stems, it's actually very simple. I go to channels and these are the ones I want to print, these ones in burgundy. These are going to be my final stems. These are going to be the actual name of the file that gets created. And then if I really wanted to, I could add a prefix as well. So the name of this particular cue is the rift. And then I have drum stem, perk low stem, perk high stem, et cetera, et cetera. In addition to that, I also have a mix bus. So if I wanted to print a stereo render or a stereo mix down of this as well, note that this channel over here, all of my subgroups are being routed to a mix bus. Now my mix bus is then being routed to my main outs. And the main reason for this is because if I wanted to import any references, I wouldn't want my references to pass through any mix bus processing on the main outs. I would want my reference to go straight to my main outs. I would then volume correct my reference so that it matches my actual mix bus. And then I can AB my mixes with all of my processing against the reference track and then on my main outs, the only thing that's happening is I have a plugin just to determine the loudness. So with all this in place, and now that I've built this deliverable into my mix template, it's super easy and I can render all of these stems and I could also render the mix bus as well. And I can do this in one shot and I can do this offline. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this render these files and I'll catch up with you in a moment. Okay, so Studio One has gone ahead and it's rendered out all of the files. Now you'll see that I have the name, the rift, which was the file name prefix, and then I have drum stem, perk low stem, perk high stem, etc., etc. The other thing to take into account here is that if I wanted to deliver these files, because I rendered them at 2448, let's go ahead and show these in the finder, I could essentially just grab all of these files, pack them into a folder, and send them off to the composer. And these files are all sitting at 24, 48, and these will all sum together to equal my exact mix. Now, the one thing to take note here is that I don't have any processing that's happening on my main outs whatsoever. If I did, this would obviously affect how my stems sum together. But this is how I've actually built this mixing template so that I can print subgroups of stems that when played back together at unity gain in any DAW, will sum together to perfectly equal my Stereo 2 mix, which I've also printed here. And this is mostly as a reference. And if I take a look at all of my other files here, So it's the exact same thing. So anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope you found this video useful. If you do find this content useful, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them below. I will do my best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.